I would like to request Professor M. M. Taki Khan to address the gathering. Professor M. M. Taki Khan. The Consular General of Iran, uh, Dr. Professor Karim, and the dignitaries on the dais. It gives me a great pleasure <coughs> to address this August gathering this morning. And for this, I thank the organizers who have invited me to say a few words on this occasion. The topic of this conference is very interesting. Science, technology, development, and justice. There are four parameters. And if you look at it very carefully, then these four parameters are all interrelated. And if you look at a holistic picture of science, for these four parameters, they are intimately related and they can be classified as things and incidents. Science and technology are things and incidents are development and justice. So things and incidents may be classified under this classification. For a, and for, for a layman, it is very difficult to understand that all the branches of knowledge are so interconnected and interrelated that they look like a beautiful carpet. And if you look at this carpet, then you look at the to totality, totality of things. But what we do we try to break this carpet into knots and threads and look at the finer details. And these finer details lose the beauty of the carpet. But nevertheless, we understand the subtleties behind this. And when we look at it very carefully, then these subtleties are, are only the products of our observation our interpretation of and our conclusions. That means it is all very much dependent on who is looking at it and who is analyzing the data. But if you look at very carefully, we try to understand nature and we are all students of nature. But we cannot look at the, the total reality at the same time. So what we do, is we make use of small windows of our observation to look at nature. And these windows of our observation are the branches of science, almost 300 now, physics, chemistry, botany, zoology, life sciences, engineering, all these are small windows through which we see nature and try to interpret nature. But what we get out of all this is not the total picture of the reality, the total picture of the reality is beyond our reach, but what we get is just a feeling of the reality and going nearer to the reality. Therefore, as we go nearer and nearer to the reality, we understand things more and more. So, this is about some, my philosophical comments on the topic. Let, let me act now start actually with uh, a few themes of the seminar. First of all, science and technology. Let me go through the history of science and technology. It's all as old as almost 5,000 years old. And if you look at, look at the Stone Age, where man used to live in the caves, and he was afraid of all the phenomena of nature. He was afraid of the lightnings, he was afraid of the snakes, he was afraid of many things. Therefore, all those items of which the man was afraid of, he used to depict it in the caves and consider them as gods and worship. So now also, people worship snakes, people worship the other uh, phenomena of nature, sun, moon, etc. So well, this was the beginning that man started to understand his proximity to nature. Then 
came the Greek period about 2,000 years ago, when actually some good thinkers were there, and these thinkers were Aristotle and Plato, and these two had started to revolutionize philosophy, and they were the first to recognize the unity of Allah, the unity of God. And people had taken their uh, views and then have wept this into the uh, uh, fabric of Islam. And most of all philosophers have taken intuition from them, but it is wrong to say that Islam has no philosophy. Islam has philosophy. But we have taken some ideas and then Islamized those ideas uh, in terms of our knowledge. Uh, Islam has produced great philosophers like Al-Kindi, Farabi, Avicenna, and Sheikh Nasiruddin Tusi, uh, Mullah Sadruddin Shirazi, for example. These are all excellent philosophers of uh, Islam. They have contributed very richly to knowledge. But this was the, the Greek period. Then the real revolution started with uh, Newton's uh, discoveries his uh, laws of motion. And one thing which we are, I'd like to uh, mention here is the fact that these laws of motion he deduced from, uh, ca uh, from calculus, he invented calculus, and he was the first to uh, state, uh, to, to demonstrate that his laws of nature are also applicable to the celestial bodies, and he was able to predict uh, the, the, the timings of the uh, volcanoes and also the timings of the solar and lunar eclipse. So this was the revolution. But the matter had gone to this extent that uh, those who followed Newton had started to imagine that matter is supreme and everything in, the, in nature is working like a clock, therefore there is no need of God. So there was a the progress of atheism based on the superiority of matter. But then came the time of Einstein, and he was first to show the equivalence of matter and energy, that these are the two sides of the same coin, that matter is not supreme, matter is just equivalent to energy, M e is equal to, e equal to mc square. And this was a revolution which brought down the superiority of matter and also the atheism that, that was following this uh, uh, Newton theories. So you, Einstein has a great contribution. Now then we come to the present period, where, which is almost about 30 or 40 years. I, I don't want to go back to. Uh, I, you will be surprised that the discoveries of these 30 or 40 years are equivalent to the, the entire history of mankind. Everything has been discovered. And the most important are a few things which I would like to mention, and that is the uh, fundamental particle. What? There were, after the fundamental particle, now we know that there is no fundamental particle. The fundamental entity is only Al Almighty God, and everything he has produced is in pairs. So, Subhanallah so, so everything is pairs. And then science has taken huge strides in the material science, in the, in the drugs, targeted drugs, and in the material science, in the engineering technology, surface uh, sciences. And uh, if you look at the internet, you can find out the details about all this, therefore I don't want to mention this. I think anybody ha has an access to what is going on. So this is really a revolution of science uh, of our, our age that we know so much information. Now the next thing I would like to say, the fevers, this was about the science and technology. The contribution of Islam to science, which is very important, and this has to be mentioned, that before Islam, the Christian world has separated revelation, reason, from, from, from religion. They say that two are quite separate. And religion is nothing to do with reason. 
And this was the result of atheism in Europe. And because they had no uh, value of uh, religion and religion was just put in a corner. But if you look at uh, Islam, Islam is the first religion that says that your nature is not different from the nature of the cosmos. Fitratullah lati fataran nas alaiha. Your nature is the same as the nature of the cosmos. And not only this, God has invited in the Holy Quran about people who should ponder, look into the phenomena of nature, try to understand them. What have happened to their hearts? Are their hearts are locked? And then all the signs of God are there this, as the alternate sources of energy. God says that learn about the alternate the, the signs of God and uh, try to understand them. So the result of all the nearness of science to religion was the fact that in the second century, uh, Hijri, about 780 or so, there was a revolution uh, in the thinking of the Muslim scientists and they started to ponder into uh, areas and for thousand years they had control over science and technology. And the leader for all this is the Imam for whom's birthday we are celebrating on 17th, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. So, he was the pioneer and he had a university in Medina where 300 topics were taught and he was the first to say that air, earth, fire and water are not elements and but they are all mixtures or compounds. And he developed the methods for the separation of things from earth and he was considered as the founder of the father of chemistry because his student Jabir ibn Hayyan has written about 1,000 papers in, in his, during his lifetime. And he had about 30 years or 40 years of, of teaching with, with Imam, and he taught him all the unit operations. All the operations, unit operations in chemistry that we do right now are the fruits of the uh, teaching of Imam Jafar Sadr. Not only was a great uh, teacher in Islam, he was also a great mathematician, he was a great scientist, he was a great physicist. Therefore, a group of people started to come up and occupied the area of knowledge for almost thousand years. Uh, Henry Robert Buffet, Buffon, uh, the, in his book, Making of Humanity, has uh, acknowledged this, that all the development of Europe is because of the transmission of Islamic science to Europe when they were in the dark ages and therefore we are really the pioneers and Islam has brought this revolution. Now coming to development, when we talk of development, we, we talk of a, a sort of arrangement of the society, a sort of uh, they are getting, getting, bringing some from reforms in the society. Uh, and these are social, economic, all sorts of changes. And this needs energy. From where does the energy come? Therefore, if you look at uh, the development program, development program is what is known in the second law of thermodynamics as the decrease of entropy or increase of energy. So, where is the energy coming from? The energy comes from the environment. We exchange energy to the, from the environment. We take energy from the environment. We give back the energy to the environment. Similarly, there is in, in, uh, exchange of information. Therefore, all these parameters, this forms a huge web. And somebody was mentioning about the teaching program and the exchange program. These are all aspects of development. And I would also uh, will, will support this idea that whatever you do, you do, you do the best because what the world needs is the best, the best scientists. And we were people who are best scientists about 1,000 years ago. I think we should be best scientists right now. And 
there are a few Nobel Prize winners amongst the ladies, the Muslim ladies. I think that should be followed, and then you all know that just we are, we are, we are developing, and education should be not should not be restricted to one class. It should be it should be given to all, and then we come to the idea of justice. Uh, finally, I, I should say a few words about the justice. Justice is a very important parameter for the control of science and technology. For example, look at the atomic energy program. If you look at the atomic energy, then the peaceful uses of atomic energy is the application of justice for the welfare of the mankind. Therefore, whatever may be the background, people talk about utilization of atomic energy for peaceful, for peaceful purposes, but I don't know how many nations are very serious about it, and I think Iran is very serious about it. Therefore, this is the application of justice to science and technology in areas that the areas where the information is harmful to mankind is not used, and the areas in which information useful to mankind is, is applicable. Then as far as justice is concerned, Allah says that we has promoted justice and justice is one of the attributes of Allah and we believe that Allah is just. Unless Allah is just, he, they, there cannot be a balance in the world, there cannot be justice. And importance of justice is mentioned in Quran, in Surah and Nisa, there where Allah says that, Ya uh, Yohannas, Allah says that O the people, O, o the people who believe, you be you be the people who, who, who establish justice and do this for Allah. And if this justice is even against you or your parents or your relatives or your by, then don't hesitate in application of justice. It is impertinent whether it is rich or poor. Apply justice and uh, justice is very important. So this is the application of justice and similarly the application of peace because Islam is the religion of peace and justice and peace combined, I think, should be the path for the future. Thank you very much.